Good morning, Kirsten. Thanks for coming. So today topic, the song of enlightenment. There's a two like sutras that really uh, influence my path of awakening. One is this song of enlightenment. The other is the heart sutra. Why? Because um, these two sutra or the uh, the words by the masters are con very concise. It's not very long. It's just uh, among thousand words. It's very concise and very how to say awakening. So each time I, I, I read it, it brings a new meaning or new understanding to me. It's so profound that if I start 10 years ago, it was different. Five years ago, it's, it's different. I mean, I understand differently. Nowadays, it's different. So it's really influence my path of awakening and uh, I want to introduce here the song of enlightenment if you look at the uh, the translation here by so it's by great master Yong Jia so if you go to Yong Jia is the disciple of six patriarch Hui Neng. Yongjia is a city actually, is nowadays in Wenzhou around two, maybe 1,000 kilometers away from Shanghai, kind of like East South China. It's a, it's a city in, in East South China. Anyway, Yongjia, so in the old times, masters are named by their, the, by the city they are born. So Master Yongjia was born in, in the city Yongjia. I will paste uh, Master Yongjia's maybe Wikipedia link here. Actually, I talk about him like here and there. Thank you, uh, Sublima, Sublimo. <laughs> Sub, Sublimino. Thanks for coming again. So, Yongjia is the disciple of Six Patriarch, but actually, he just uh, have a had a conversation with the Master Huilin just a couple of minutes, less than 10 minutes, I think. Then he got enlightened. Actually, he before he met Master Huilin, the sixth, sixth patriarch of Chan, he was already enlightened. But you know, you at that time you need confirmed. You need be confirmed by another master. So he went to visit the uh, sixth patriarch Huilin from Wen uh, Yongjia to Chaoxi, like from Zhejiang province to Guangdong province, which is, uh, again, more than 500 kilometers away. In old time, you don't have plane, so he traveled. I don't know if it's by horse or just by walking one month at least to visit Master Huinam. Uh, definitely not convenient, and as now, we can talk face to face no matter uh, where are you? But at that time, if you're a sincere uh, disciple, I mean, in the past awakening, you have to travel a long, long way to meet, to meet the masters. So lucky you, lucky us. Uh, Yong Jia, if you look at this Wikipedia link, he had very short conversation with his teacher and stayed there just one night. So there's a story. He was 
also called One Night Guest. And the next morning he left Caoxi, left uh, Master Hui and uh, back to Yongjia, back to the city and uh, began to teaching there. And uh, after that, he, he wrote this song of enlightenment, which is really, really very good. It's like become the song of enlightenment become the text of Chan tradition, of Zen tradition. Of, of, uh, so it's really important. Mm. You can just try to look at this uh, Wikipedia Yongjia. I will just maybe so the overnight guest, right? So <laughs> so, if you look at the uh, Yongjia, the link, we could be a link, and in the middle, there's an overnight guest. And in the middle, there's a very interesting the meeting between uh, Hui Neng and Yongjia was very interesting. So, arriving at the temple, Yongjia walks around Hui Neng three times and standing, staring at him. <laughs> he didn't bow to Master Huilin. At that time, Master Huilin was, was very famous teaching in South China. Like uh, if I was right at more than 1,000 students or disciples <clears throat> following his teaching. And, uh, you know, when you met a uh, master, basically you bow. But... Yongjia didn't bow. Why? Because he was so proud, he was proud of, of himself. Because he had some study of the Vimalakirti Sutra, and he's he was um, like a so-called master too. I mean, he studied Buddhism for a lot of years. That's why he didn't bow to Master Huineng. And uh, Huineng comments on his lack of formality. You see, to which Yongjia responds, since the question of inc incessant rebirth is a momentous one and a death may come at any moment, I have no time to waste on ceremony or on formality and wish you to give me a quick answer to this problem. <laughs> <laughs> so basically he said I have no time to waste to waste you answer my question <laughs> I don't bow I didn't bow to you because I don't have time and because death may come at any moment <laughs> in Chinese I say Hui Neng suggests uh, he embody birthlessness in order to overcome impermanence. So what, because he said death um, may come at any moment, that implies in Yongjia's mind, he still have birth and death, the idea of birth and death. Then Huilin suggests he embody birthlessness in order to overcome impermanence. Wow, you see, in, in, in an instant, a master can, can, can see the implications of this disciple's question. Yongjia immediately displays understanding of this, but then readies himself to leave. You see, their, their conversation only lasts like uh, one question, one answer, and uh, Yongjia immediately displays understanding, and he wants to leave. <laughs> uh, you know, no bullshit, no no chit chat at all. 
<laughs> nowadays we talk so many words and <laughs> maybe you guys still you know <laughs> hopefully you got enlightened <laughs> um very interesting uh so you just want to leave because he now understood he was uh, confirmed that he was right by master huilin then huilin asked if he is not leaving too quickly yunja then says there's no such thing as quickly you see there's no such thing as quickly when two masters meet their words is really beyond our normal people's understanding why you ask me to stay because I want to leave quickly. So actually there's no such thing as quickly. For motion does not, does not truly exist. <laughs> there's no, not, no such a thing as quick or slow, you see? Time in the master's mind does not exist because they reach a timeless zone. Anyway, Huilin asks why this should be the case, to which he, uh, Yung Jia responds that any distinction about quickness or slowness is an artificial construct. So it's an artificial construct in our mind. It's helpful, but not ultimate. So uh, it's a eternal now so there's only eternal now there's only now past and future quickness or slow is our mental construction okay huinan then explains that uh, his interlocutor interlocutor now truly understands the concept of birthlessness so he again confirmed yung jia you are enlightened but Yung Jia cleverly asked if a mere concept, any form of artificial distinction can really have a meaning. When asks who makes a distinction about whether there's a meaning or not, Yung Jia responds, distinction are meaningless. Uh, when Huilin cries, excellent, excellent. Now, just stay here a single night. That's so that Huilin can officially confirm uh, his enlightenment, and thus Yun Jia is known as the overnight guest because he proved in, uh, his enlightenment to Huilin in one night. So that's uh, that's the story between Huilin and Yun Jia. So, how to say, uh, interesting, so uh, profound. So. You see, as the ultimate, there's no time, there's no birth, there's no death. But in this birthless, timeless, ultimate field, there is uh, time and space. So, as I said, our perception generates a space base, our thoughts generates a time. The whole world is our projection in space and time. It's helpful. It's, but now the, the master says it's meaningless. But anyway, I, I will say it's kind of meaning because in the meaningless uh, situation or projection or in the space-time uh, projection, it leads us to the timeless, birthless field of ultimate. <laughs> I don't know. That's the best I, I can ex explain here. <laughs> Do you have any questions here? <laughs> That's why we need to study Song of Enlightenment to to, to investigate how, why masters say so. <laughs> okay, overnight guest, Master Yung Jia wrote this song of enlightenment. So now let's back to the song of enlightenment. So 
before we start, uh, study the Song of Enlightenment. I will paste here again in the chat. It's very interesting. interesting. It's translated by the city of 10,000 Buddha, which is located in the United States, I think in Los Angeles. Let's double check what's the... So the, song, the translation of Sound Enlightenment was done by the association called the City of 10,000 Buddha. And in this association, there's another master, uh, I will paste it here. And his, uh, his name is uh, Xuanhua, Master Xuanhua. I will paste, uh, you see every, every lineage, every translation of the sutra or com commentary has its uh, reason or how to say, like a, it's like a chain of, uh, I will say, uh, enlightenment. Every word we are read, reading now has has some uh, was done by other masters. Okay, it's not uh, it's, it happens with a rhythm, with a reason, and we should uh, cherish or be grateful for this translation. So here is the master Xuanhua. Xuanhua. Uh, from 1918 to 1995, was a Chinese monk of Chan Buddhism and uh, a contributing figure in bringing Chinese Buddhism to the United States in the late 20th century. He passed away in 1995. He was this... Uh, he was the ninth generation of uh, Gu Yan school. Oh, anyways, you know, even in the Chan lineage, we have different schools and uh, branches. And his teacher was famous too. It's called the Xu Yun Lao He the master Xu Yun. So I will. So some sometimes studying history of Buddhism is very interesting too. So here I paste the Xu Yun. Xu Yun is more like a more. Why is it Xu Yun? Yeah. It, he's, so it's from 1840 to 1959. So his life span, Xu Yun master's lifespan is more than 100 years. So it's. Here is like 115, was a renowned Chinese Chan Buddhism master and an influential Buddhist teacher in the 19th century and 20th century. Anyway, I don't go, go to the details of the master's uh, life. Maybe we, we will have another uh, study of his, um, this master Xu Yun. And uh, if you look at the right side, Chinese, uh, Xu, Xu Yun Master was the eighth generation of Wei Yan school, a fourth, uh, 43rd generation of Ling Ji school. So remember Ling Ji school, okay? Ling Ji school again traced back to Master uh, Hui Neng, the sixth, sixth patriarch. <laughs> so interesting. So all the traditions have his lineage and it's authentic. That's why all the lineage is so precious. No matter it's Zen or it's a Tibetan Buddhism, it's a Pure Land school, whatever school it is, it, the, every school has its lineage, like a chain of path of the path 
it's it's so precious anyway. Okay, back to the song of enlightenment. <laughs> I will take a couple of times of videos to study this one. It's really, really good. So back to this song of enlightenment again. I paste it here in the in the box in the chat again. Since the wonderful meaning of Chan school are apart from, so I'm starting, I'm reading the preface, okay. Since the wonderful meanings of Chan school are apart from words and speech and apart from the mind and its conditions, Bodhidharma did not establish a literature when he came from the West. So Bodhidharma was the first patriarch of Chan in China around the Sixth century, it was him, Bodhidharma, who brought Chan to China. And again, Bodhidharma was the 28th patriarch from in India Buddhism. The first patriarch of Chan in India was the, the disciple of Shakyamuni Buddha. The his name was uh, Mahakasyapa. Again, there's a story of the silent uh, sermon where the Buddha hold, hold a flower in his hand in the sermon while said nothing in, in that uh, teaching. Only uh, Mahakasyapa understood his meaning. You know, that's why in Chan or in Zen we say it's apart from words and speech is apart from the mind and conditions. You see the lineage trace back to the, like 200, uh, 2,500 years ago. Okay, the first patriarch of Chan is actually, it was the disciple uh, of Shikamuni Buddha and uh, the disciple's name was Maha Kasyapa. And, Bodhidharma was the 28th patriarch, and then he came to China around 6th century, and from there, the Chan or Zen flower, uh, blossom in China, and later on bring to South Korea, bring to uh, Japan, or North, uh, more South uh, Asia too, now spread in all over the world. <laughs> you see, if you really have a little understanding of how the lineage was carried on, and, you know, we will be, we will like um, be grateful. Wow. All the masters contribute or put a lot of efforts in, in the, you know, transmission of this lineage. So Bodhidharma point directly to the mind of people so that they might perceive their nature and become Buddha. That's the time. The mind is Buddha. <laughs> the pure mind is the Buddha. Uh, how then can there be a song and uh, how can be an explanation of the song? Because in Chan Master, uh, So, so stillness, ultimately a thought moved and uh, moved and finally speechless. He opened his mouth. Okay, so Yong Jia Da has another name is Xuan Jue. That's why Yong Jia Xuan Jue. If you go back to the Yong Jia Masters uh, Wiki, uh, Wikipedia link, it's Yong Jia Xuan Jue. So he's still because in Chan Master Yong Jia Xuan Jue's stillness, ultimately a thought moved and finally speechless. He opened his mouth. He was apart from characteristics of the words and speech and yet spoke words. So in, in Chan, we have, a, we know wisdoms of words, although we, the ultimate cannot expressed by words. Yet, if the master 
was enlightened and fully enlightened. I mean, and he can describe the ultimate by words. So it's up to the disciple or the student's understanding. If we can understand it, if the disciple can understand or begin to enlighten, then he can understand the words because the words contains wisdom. Do we follow? We uh, we call it the wen zi bo ru or progeny of words, wisdom of words. So it's like uh, the master, uh, uh, how to say, uh, decode, code. Just give me one sec. Uh, the master encode his wisdom in words, then transmit it to his students, and students can decode. It's like the zip files nowadays. So if somebody wants to send you a lot of documents or files, more than 10 pieces of, so, of documents, so he will zip it in a file, right? and send to you and you got it and you unzip it, something like that. So Buddha zip his wisdom in the words and the students can unzip the wisdom from the words. Do you follow? <laughs> can, un can you unzip <laughs> the wisdoms? <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay, I continue this. Uh, so we are in the preface of the Song of Enlightenment, right? So Yong Jia Xuanzhui kindly, his kindly heart compelled him to spontaneously express the in inexpressible while in a playful in a playful samadhi that's very beautiful words so samadhi does not means you sit quietly doing nothing okay samadhi could be very playful active so it's a meditation in action or wisdom in action he explained yung jia xuanjue explained this secret formula this song of enlightenment, not failing to wish to guide living beings to reach the region of the sages, the region of the sages, the field of enlightenment, the field of inner stillness, the field of inner calm, inner uh, silence. This is not actually, it's, it's not inner. The Dharma Kaya was, is already is not inner. When you, once we say inner, it's outer, right? So again, the it's essence of Buddha's teaching is non-dual. It's all you and yet, yet only you. <laughs> so, uh, words is very, words reach its limitation here. If you want to uh, decode the ultimate, okay? Xuanhua, uh, Xuanhua, again, the translator of this uh, song of enlightenment uh, from the city of 10,000 Buddha, the, uh, another Chan master, uh, heedless of my untutored rusticity and the depth of learning, speaking like one who groans when he isn't even sick and so with intention to cast out bricks to attract jade. <laughs> you know, the Xuanhua, the translator, wants to have the intention to cast out bricks to attract jade, exhausting his stupid sincerity. I have briefly commented, uh, describing my view as seen through a hollow reed. He's very, I'll say, uh, Qian Xu, sorry, I, I, 
Just give me a last second. Modest. You know, he was very, he humbled himself to translate uh, the Master uh, Yong Jia's uh, Song of Enlightenment. So, Master Sh uh, Xuan Hua was humbled, was very humble and uh, modest. Okay, that's his merit. So, Commentators vows in verse, so it's like Shen Hua repurifies his body, mouth, and mind, dedicates his life and bows to Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. So Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, three juries, right? And to all Buddhas of ten directions and the three periods of time. You see, like twenty years ago, when I read, read this, okay, I didn't understand. All the Buddhas of 10 directions and three periods of time. What does that mean? So if you remember in days ago, a month ago, I talked about the uh, Tibetan Buddhism, the Vajrayana Buddhism, especially Tibetan Buddhism, they have very strong visualizations. They visualize things, okay? It's kind of a very positive imagination. So in this one, all the Buddhas of 10 directions, so you can visualize now all the Buddhas of 10, 10 directions and three periods of time, past, present, and future, are all in your awareness right now. It is true. And if you visualize this, it is true for you. That's the... That's the Merits of the Dharmakaya. Our mind is very, very powerful. Once you can visualize this, it's it becomes true for you. Anyway, I just want to point out the visualization in Tibetan Buddhism of Vajrayana is so important. Sometimes, so again, if I show you this picture from Vajrayana Nilich. I think uh, so. There's all the Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, uh, de 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 deities. So it's kind of like like here. To so all the Buddhas of ten directions of the end of the three periods of time. I I use visualization a lot, so that's why I find a kind of echo in my mind here. The past, present, and future, and to all the honored bodhisattvas, mahasattvas, to the succession of the, patri the patriarchs of east and west, up and down, left and right, you see, and to the lamps of holy sagehood still passed on form uh, on from the from the old. I only hope the triple jewel, triple jewel again is uh, Buddha, uh, Sangha, and Dharma. The triple jewel will confer aid and protection. Explain for me the proper enlightenment and turn the Dharma wheel. Turn the Dharma wheel. Okay. Now the Dharma wheel is turned by us, turned by you, by me. Once you're reading the words the, of Prajna and we try to decode the wisdoms in the words, right? So we're turning the Dharma wheel now. So, uh, dam, turning the Dhamma wheel means we are we are carrying we are trans we are decoding the wisdoms, the compassion, the love from all the Buddhas and the Bodhisattvas, and we are we lay once we understand like we are container of the or receiver of the wisdoms and compassions and. Once we can understand and contain this, then we can transmit all these wisdoms, compassions uh, to others. You see, we're not only a receiver, we're also a transmitter. That's why 
That's the meaning of turning the Dharma wheel. Okay. Wisdom, compassion, love. That's all. We are receiving and we are transmitting at the same time. So that seeing, hearing, the perceiving, I become ir irreversible, turning the boat of kindness around to rescue my fellow beings. So Mahayana, okay? So we are studying Mahayana Buddhism. Mahayana means you are not only for your self-liberation, but also you, you try to help others. Like your yana means a vehicle, a boat. Like you're driving a great vehicle to carry on the fellows, the awakened being to your boat, to the other shore to awaken us, awaken their others too, to enlighten them too. Do you follow? <laughs> you see, the master's heart is so big. That's called maha. Maha means big, great. So turning the boat of kindness, kindness, wisdom, and compassion around, it's like you are the res you are the rescue. You, you how to say you are there's a, your friends or your relatives are in the water, they drop into water, they want to uh, then help, help. Now you're 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 how to say you're bowing, you're 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 driving a boat to rescue them. So it's a metaphor. Do you follow? So until they every single living being is taken across to the stillness, the other shore, the inner stillness, the inner is the inner is outer, okay? Um the stillness, the silence, the the, the field of uh, liberation. That's all the masters want to do, all the bodhisattvas want to do, okay, to rescue us. I'm rescued. Once you are rescued, you can try to res rescue others too. <laughs> Once you are awakened, you try to awaken others too. That's, that's, that's very, very natural. Because you have... You had that taste of enlightenment. You know it's it's so yummy. The spiritual food is so yummy. And I return to the original Dharma nature body. Dharma nature body is your Dharmakaya. And beyond ancient kind the visage of awesome sound Buddha. <laughs> this written by in 1965. You see? by Master Xuan Hua. Although he passed away at 95, 1995, his words is in our heart now. It's so awakening, it's so beautiful. You can see the kindness, the compassion, the love in, this, in these words, right? So we are, we are turning the Dharma wheel now. <laughs> uh. So beautiful, so beautiful. Okay, now we are the forward. Yongjia is the name of a place, like near Wenzhou, now in the Jiangsu, uh, Zhejiang, uh, sorry, Zhejiang uh, province, South China, okay, South and East China, during the Tang Dynasty. Again, Tang Dynasty is the prominent dynasty where Buddhism uh, was uh, f flourished. So 618 to 907, it was known as the Wenzhou Prefecture during the Song Yuan Ming. So Song Yuan Ming was the uh, dynasty later on after the, the Tang Dynasty. Tang Song Yuan Ming Qing. Uh, the name was has since been changed to Yongjia County. The master is called by the place where he lived rather than his own name in order to show respect for him. Great master is also a title of respect. His name was Yongjia Xuanjue, right? And was a son of a Thai family of Wenzhou. He left home life as a pure youth and, re and read widely in the in Tripitaka especially in the Tiantai school of all the 
Vipuya Sutra, uh, it was upon studying the Vimalakirti Sutra. Vimalakirti Sutra. I, I talk about, you can Google my YouTube channel. I talk about this Vimalakirti Sutra, the, the Sutra of non duality, the best of best Sutra. I mean, there's a lot of best sutras in Buddhist, uh, Buddhist teaching. That he was awakened to the principle of the Buddha mind pure mind, a, a mind of, uh, without ego, without personality, okay, uh, total freedom. He was told by Dharma master, uh, Xuan Tse. So Xuan Tse was the disciple of uh, Six Page of Huinan. He, he traveled to visit the uh, Yongjia master. So he, he happened to, and that he had Tallied with the mind, the patriarch, I mean the patriarch Huinan. Uh, thereupon, uh, Yongjia want to see the sixth page of Huinan after he had been certified. So after he had stayed one night we, uh, at Chaoxi where sixth patriarch lived, he wrote his song of enlightenment. So Yongjia Xuanjue, Xuanjue means profound awakening. You see the master's name contains or consists already the profound awakening. Xuanzhe, the disciple of Six Patriarch who met uh, Yongjia, is received from Dharma of the Six Patriarch. Anyway, they met because um, the six, uh, they met. That's why the Yongjia can met can meet uh, uh, six picture queen. Anyway, let's so self certified way. Zheng Dao Ge. So Zheng Dao Ge is the Chinese name of uh, the Song of Enlightenment. It's not so important. Let's go to the second page. So we are on the second page of Song of Enlightenment. So it's text. So now we, we arrive at text. Before I read the English one, I want to read the Chinese one first because you know translation sometimes missed a little bit the authentic uh, meaning. Jin bu jian jue xuan jue xue wu wei xian dao ren bu chu wang xiang bu jiu zhen wu ming shi xing ji fo xing huan hua kong sheng ji fa sheng hua. Only like um. You know, in Chinese version, we is is uh, like a short sentence uh, with uh, with like uh, seven characters. Okay, it's like a a poem with rhymes. So that's the fourteen uh, characters, two sentences, another. The Wu Ming Shi Xin Ji Fo Xin Huan Hua Kong Sheng Ji Fa Shen. The total uh, twenty-eight character uh, Chinese characters, but it contains huge information. Hopefully, I can explain it well. So let's back back to the uh, English version text. Have you not seen people whose study has ended, who do nothing, who abide in a way at ease? They do not banish false thoughts. They do not seek the truth. The true nature of ignorance is the Buddha nature. Wow. The empty body any illusory transformation is the Dharma body. 
<laughs> so emptiness is form, form is emptiness. So this resonates with the heart sutra very well. You see, so this again confirmed me, no matter it's what time or what masters said, they always point into the same realization. It's a confirmation to me, to you, to everyone, again and again and again. That's all. Have you not seen people whose study has ended? The master does not study anymore because he reached the ultimate. Who do nothing, who abide in a way at ease, there's nothing to do if you are fully awakened. <laughs> Ultimately, I mean, you may try to awaken others, but you know the idea of awakening others is an illusion too. <laughs> do you follow? Yan zuo shui yue dao cha. Ultimately, there's no people to to be liberated. There's no person, there's no body mind to be free. <laughs> it's crazy. It's really crazy. Everything you see is an is an illusion right now. Ultimately, I mean, it's so real to us. It's just like you you can watch a you you are watch a movie and you know the killing the hero, the beauty the beasts, in in the movie it's just a fall a, a a fake, it's unreal, something like that. That's why the song of enlightenment is uh, said like this. They don't study, they do nothing, they abide in a way at ease. They do not banish false thoughts, you know, for the for the for the choose seekers or for the past awakening we try to slow down the monkey mind we try to reach the stillness from a fully awakened awakened master this is wrong because they do not banish false thoughts they do not seek the truth because you are the truth it's again it's like you declare i'm a human being no you don't Declare that you are a human being. You are a human being already. Why you? It's like you go to <clears throat> a stage in front of people and say, "I am human." <laughs> people say you are crazy. <laughs> of course, you're human. <laughs> and they do not seek the truth. Why? Because you are the truth already. The true nature of ignorance is the Buddha nature. Wow. The very false thinking in your mind now is the manifestation of cosmic intelligence. Okay. The true nature of ignorance is the Buddha nature. It seems to you is kind of like um, ignorance because you don't know it yet. You don't understand it in a total picture. The moment you can listen to me, I can speak to you, and you can see your surroundings, you can feel your body sensations, is the functioning of your Buddha nature, which have, the Buddha nature itself has infinite functions and uh, applications. 
This empty body and illusory transformation is the Dhammakaya. Dhammakaya, the emptiness, is the form, the body. Everything you see is so real. <laughs> it's so true. Once you reach enlightenment, fully enlightened, I mean. So you reach the fear, the, the realization of suchness. There's only one word to de describe it now, suchness. This one coin of suchness has two sides, Dharma body and uh, physical body, ever-changing and the never-changing. Ever-changing is the never-changing. Never-changing is, is the ever-changing. It's the, in, the, in the worldly mind, it's, what are you talking about? Black is white, white is black? No way. Oh, you must be crazy. Yes. In the worldly view, a master is crazy. How can you say, uh, uh, whose study has ended, who do nothing uh, abide in the, in the way at ease, the way, the Tao, the flow of cosmic, the cosmos, the cosmic flow. You, you are abiding it right now. You don't know it. That's all. Once you know it, you are at ease. <laughs> it's so beautiful. You see, uh, if, uh, Krishna, I hope, I, 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 I think you understand. You can taste what's, you can decode. The wisdom in the words right now is so beautiful. There's nothing beautiful than this. It's beautiful than lily flower, I think. <laughs> it's a beauty more beautiful than a beautiful lady. Because <laughs> this is transcends space and time. This understanding transcends all space and time. Transcend any situation, any experience. I mean, any experience. Now we have eight billion people. We are all experiencing. I mean, if you're not falling deep sleep, you are all. We are all experiencing. Let's say we have half eight billion are wake for now. Are wake for now. And so this understanding transcends all the experiences of four billion people right now. That's called wisdom. It's, it's beyond any words. It's beyond any worldly knowledge. It's, you may be a master of piano. You may be a master of painting. You may be a famous doctor. You may be a, the, the most rich person in the world. But if you don't understand this, you fail. We fail. Because this transcends space and time. The song of enlightenment is the absolute wisdom from all the phenomena world, past, present, and future. You name it. It transcends 110 billion minds of humanity. <laughs> A fully awakened master does not ba banish false thoughts because he know the true nature of false thoughts is the Buddha nature. The repo in the ocean is an entire ocean in action. You are now, are the, we, each one of us now is the cosm cosmos in action. That's why we can talk, we can share, we can decode this 
sound of enlightenment. You can see, you can feel, you can experience, you can learn, you can love, you can serve. The whole thing is an expression of cosmic intelligence. Once you know it, you are at ease. You, you are not doing it, okay? We are not doing this. We are in the flow of cosmic ocean again, you see? You can abide in a way, in a flow, at ease. And you do not banish false thoughts. You do not seek truth because now you're in the truth. You are the truth. You, we only seek something that we are not, right? How can you seek something you are? <laughs> that's that's not logical at all. It's not logic at all. <laughs> then in the Dharma body enlightenment, there's not a single thing and its source, the inherent nature is the Buddha of divine innocence. The five scandals like floating clouds and uh, emptily come and go. So I so this is another one now. 法身觉了, 五运浮云空去来, 三毒水泡, <laughs> so crazy. Uh, In the Dharma body's enlightenment, there's not a single thing. So if you are a quantum physicist, if you use a microscope, study everything you can see, feel, touch, smell, taste, and think, you study all the inputs and outputs of your five, six sensory organs. You will study, there's, they are all empty because you only see the vibrations. Uh, an atom is not an atom. You cannot really touch the item because it's only the, the, the feeling that you're touching your computer now or the table now is that the field is touching, is interacting another field. The electromagnetic field is interacting with each other now. So if you feel you, you can touch it, there's a sense, sensation of touching. Actually, there's nothing touching nothing. <laughs> Do you follow? Nothing really exists as a solid, as a fixed shape or form. Everything's moving. It's a vibration. The field itself is a vibration. It's energy flow. And it sucks. You, you thought you're touching a computer now. You, you can touch your body. You can rub your hands. Actually, it's not touching. Nothing touching anything. <laughs> That's why we say in the Dharma body's enlightenment, there's not a single thing, a fixed form, okay? And its source, the inherent nature, is the Buddha divine. So we are in the Buddha Nate, we are in the Dharmakaya, we are in the field of cosmic intelligence right now. If you really understand this. The five scandals like floating clouds emptily come and go. Five scandals, forms, feelings, perceptions, mental formations, and consciousness. We talk about these five scandals again. All the five scandals, scandals basically, it's all the inputs of your six or five senses and outputs of your mind, total six senses, are five scandals. So it's five scandals, like a very... Um, abstract remote words but if you say what you can see here touch smell uh, taste touch uh, and think 
or five senders, it's, it has a more close understanding to you, right? So all the out, all the inputs from your five senses and output from the mind, like floating clouds, emptily come and go. So emptiness is the essence teaching of Buddha. Emptiness does not mean it does not exist, okay? It exists, but it's empty. You can touch, you can feel, you can see, you can think. All your five senses and the mind exist, but it's empty. <laughs> There's no such the emptiness again is 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 the deny of true existence. I mean the true self. True self means non non self or non true self means everything depending on every other thing. A flower is is depending on on the sun uh, depending on the sunlight the earth the water the clouds the raindrops you know the minerals you know the, a flower is a snapshot a nutshell of cosmos do you follow everything is the same everything is a nutshell it's called not show, right? Of every other thing. So it, this way, it's like a holographic perception. To see a world in grain of sand, this reminds me of William Blake's uh, poem. To see a world in a grain of sand. How can you see a world in grain of sand? Because the sand in, in consists the whole world. To see a heaven in a white flower. To hold infinity in the palm of hand and eternity, e eternity in an hour. You see that William Blake is an enlightened person. Is a holographic view. Wave is ocean. Ocean is wave. Uh, decode wisdom in words, space, time, through generations, or across distance, yes, the field of cosmic intelligence that you are speaking of sparks, thoughts, of the unity consciousness that the late uh, Black Food School elder, Dr. Betty Spaken spoke of. Very interesting. Yes. Very good. You see, um, Buddha's teaching of Buddhism echoes with lot of scientific discovery, okay? Science, uh, scientific discovery is, is a discovering outward. So we study things, we, we, we divide uh, atoms, we zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, but it's an outgoing approach. While Buddhism or meditation or any um, authentic teaching is do, do not go outward, they go inward. Even though the direction is different, yet they reach the same realization. Make sense? It's like if you go, it's a circle. If you it's a circle, if you go this way, one way, and ultimately you reach here again, back to the source. And if the scientist is going the right side, and the Buddhism or meditation is from the left, starting from the left side. And they will meet for sure. Mm, five scanners like floating clouds, emptily come and go. 
now you're watching a movie. The whole world is your projection. It's a your movie with your personal signature. It's very yeah. It's very how to say. It's a freedom. You see, it's a type of a freedom. There's only one planet Earth, but there's eight billion different worlds right now. Why? Because everyone is projecting his or her world right now. It's a kind of freedom, person. So cosmic intelligence give us this freedom to project、um, project a world with everyone's personal signature or taste or interest or Personality. Yet everyone is wrong. Everyone's projection is an illusory, is is an illusion. Only the awakened mind can see its illusory projection, and back to the source. Yet can use this body mind to project, to help, to love, to learn, to experience, and fundamentally to awaken others. Do you follow? Wow, I'm so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are projecting a world every moment, every nanosecond. The world in front of us now is like a the twelve frames of a of a, a movie.、Uh, sorry, the twenty four frames. You know, in the traditional movie. We have twenty four frames in one second. Then we can see the the front actions or motions, right? In the same way, now the frequencies is so fast. We can see a such a vivid, lively world, and it's the functioning of cosmic intelligence. Okay, we should appreciate this functioning. We should appreciate. Wow. Thank you, God. Thank you, Mother Nature. You equip me with this capability of creating gener generation、uh, creation. You see, you are the creator right now. Everyone is. Everyone is generating or creating a world, projecting a world. It's a it's a certain level of freedom. But for the most of the world population, ninety nine, more than ninety nine percent, they're they're trapped in this projection. They're trapped in this dream like bubble, like、um, morning dew, like shadow, like、uh, lightning, like、um, illusion, like projection. You follow? You see all the all the. My previous videos or teachings are kind of connecting now. Once you can see this dreamlike world, then you can be free from it. Once you can have that separation, then you can unite this dreamlike illusion to experience, to learn, to. Serve to love, fundamentally to awaken. <laughs> the three point poisons, like bubbles of water, rise and sink, unreal. The poisons,、um, the greed, the、uh, anger. Or resentment and ignorance. That's the three poisons: greed, resentment, and ignorance. And、uh, most important is the ignorance. Ignorance is greatest obstacle in the path of awakening. Now we are all we are talking now is try to remove the ignorance. Right? Make sense to you? Once you remove the ignorance, your attachment to the world, 
your resistance to the unpleasant will reduce, will be less and less. That's why wisdom, the antidote to remove with, uh, ignorance, is the most, most, most important. Buddha's teaching, including meditation, is trying to reach, help us to reach the shore of wisdom, the other shore. The other shore is this shore. That shore is this shore. There's no space and time. It's all your in your awareness. <laughs> it's crazy. It's so mind blowing. <sighs> okay, I think we can end this now. End this session. I talked a lot. <laughs> anyway, it's a good talking. It's a it's a cosmic flow in my mind now. Um, on top of this. Um, and thanks for this uh, song of enlightenment. It's just uh, like a uh, like a shovel helped me to cover, uncover or discover <laughs> the treasures in my mind, in your mind, in your nature, in my nature, in everyone's nature. Thank you, Buddhas. Thank you, Bodhisattvas. Thank you, Masters. Thank you, all the awakened pioneers. Thank you, listeners. Thank you, teachers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sending an email. Thank you. See you. <laughs> Bye.